is do we have the will to stay in contact with the rich humanity of black people? to stay in contact with the beauty of black people, the intelligence of black people, the tenderness of black people, the soulfulness of black people. When you talk about Brother George Perry Floyd Jr., you're talking about a human being. You're talking about a precious son of George Perry Sr. Here we are in 2020 saying very much how you started this show, my brother. Do we have what it takes to really acknowledge the rich humanity of black folk, to treat us fairly, to treat us, to treat us like human beings? Because if not, you're going to lose your democracy. Mm. You're going under. You're going fascist. If it wasn't for black voters, especially black women voters, you would have gone fascist under the gangster name Trump. I'm telling you, brother, if the police can't do it, then, you know, we're going to do it ourselves. Okay. Let me tell you this, too. Now, let me just add this one thing, though, brother. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I thought about Brother George, and I thought about my brother, and I thought about my father, and I thought about my grandfather. I'm not going to stand there for no nine minutes and 29 seconds and watch somebody murder my father. No, no, uh-uh, no, no, no. I believe in nonviolence, but I'm not going to watch that kind of murder. I love my brother Charles McMillan. That's why he was crying. That's what his tears were about. He felt helpless. We're not going to do that. Some of us black folk, some of us black men, we're not going to stand there. We're going to have to intervene in some way. We, they ain't going to kill us like that, and we remain spectators. We got a self-respect. We got a self-defense. And we intervene when you start killing us like that. <sighs> I'm sorry. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Drone Tech, and wow, do we have a lot of crap to unpack from this rambling, incoherent, lied-filled diatribe. But first, give me 30 seconds to tell you about this new free offer for my viewers. Now, I'm pretty sure we all know that inflation is killing our retirements. Dead. The real rate of inflation? Well, it just won't let you keep up or make a profit. You need a different approach. Precious metals, not Robin Hood or stocks that can crash and leave you losing money. An IRA or a 401k with Noble Gold is is the answer. And this month, Noble Gold is gifting a genuine, rare Carson City minted Morgan Silver dollar with every qualifying IRA or 401k. You can find out more by clicking the link in the description or pinned comment or by just going to noblegoldinvestments.com. Make sure to tell them Drone Tech Politics sent you. Do we have the will to stay in contact with the rich humanity of black people? to stay in contact with the beauty of black people, the intelligence of black people, the tenderness of black people, the soulfulness of black people. When you talk about Brother George Perry Floyd Jr., you're talking about a human being. You're talking about a precious son of George Perry Sr. I just love that he talks about stereotyping black people, yet he always speaks in these broad terms, saying us and them. Both Lemon and Cornell talk about black people as if they're some sort of monolithic hive mind. And they pretend like things that happen to individuals because of their own choices are somehow happening to all black people when the stats and the data are very clear that that's not the case. First off, Cornell broadly judges and condemns America for, quote, not seeing the rich humanity of black people, the beauty of black people, the intelligence of black people, the tenderness of black people, the soulfulness of black people. I don't know about you, but that sounds like stereotypes that he's promoting. How could you possibly judge every person that way based on the surface level feature of skin color? And he's saying all these things in an apparent attempt to deflect from who George Floyd actually was. Here we are in 2020 saying very much how you started this show, my brother. Do we have what it takes to really acknowledge the rich humanity of black folk to treat us fairly, to treat us, to treat us like human beings? Because if not, you're going to lose your democracy. Is it just me or did that sound like a threat? Apparently we're supposed to get rid of trials and just acquiesce to mob violence. He talks over and over again about the humanity of brother George Floyd. 
But what about the humanity of George Floyd's victims? How about the humanity of the pregnant woman that he held at gunpoint as a hostage? Did her humanity matter? This is all just a bunch of emotional blather that's supposed to turn off your critical thinking skills and switch over to cult indoctrination mode. The vast majority of human beings don't invade homes, much less take pregnant women hostage at gunpoint. Nothing that happened to George Floyd was anybody's fault but George Floyd. Cornell keeps talking about his brother, his grandfather, his father, but why would any of those people ever get themselves into the situation that George Floyd did? They wouldn't. Cornell wants you to think that George Floyd was just minding his own business when these racist cops decided to show up and murder him. That's a lie. It's an inflammatory lie that's gonna lead to much violence. The stats are very clear. In 2020, around 200 black people were killed by police out of 42 million. And on top of that, there were around 400 white people shot by police. Oh, but that's just normal operating procedure. And again, when a scumbag white guy breaks the law and then gets shot by police when he fights back against his arrest, I don't then feel some sort of a kinship with him based on the surface level feature of sharing a skin color. Tell you, brother, if the police can't do it, then, you know, we're about to do it ourselves. Okay. I can tell you this too. Now let me just add this one thing though, brother. Yes, sir, go ahead. I thought about brother George and I thought about my brother and I thought about my father and I thought about my grandfather. I'm not going to stand there for no nine minutes and 29 seconds and watch somebody murder my father. No, no, uh-uh, no, no, no. I believe in nonviolence, but I'm not going to watch that kind of murder. I love my brother Charles McMillan. That's why he was crying. That's what his tears were about. He felt helpless. We're not going to do that. Some of us black folk, some of us black men, we're not going to stand there. We're going to have to intervene in some way. We, they ain't going to kill us like that, and we remain spectators. All right, so this is where we're getting into dangerous territory. This rambling, incoherent nut job is now inciting violence against the police, or at the very least, giving out justifications for attacking the police. How about this? It's a crazy idea. How about instead of justifying and encouraging people to fight the police or spectators to attack police, which is clearly insane and unhinged from reality, why not encourage these people to sue the departments if they're mistreated or unlawfully arrested? I've talked about it before, but on YouTube, YouTube, there's lots of these First and Second Amendment audits. These people flex their rights to police officers to see how they'll react. If the police officers mistreat them or run rampant over their rights, these people sue the departments. And let me tell you something, they end up successfully suing these departments for tens of thousands of dollars. Seems like that would be a much better outcome to people fighting the police and then dying in doing so. Oh, but I have a feeling that's exactly what people like Cornell and Don Lemon want to happen. We gotta self-respect. We got a self-defense, and we intervene when you start killing us like that. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dear Lord. Why is he crying? Is that even real crying? I don't see any tears. In fact, what's with all these fake journalists crying all the time now? You know who constantly tries to manipulate me with crying? My kids. If they don't get what they want, they cry in an attempt to manipulate me because they know that sometimes it works. It almost seems like our former free press is adopting the tactics of children. The old logical fallacy of appeal to emotion. They obviously do this because the facts simply aren't on their side. Not only has murder not been proven in this case, there's exactly zero evidence that it had anything to do with race. If you disagree with anything I said in this video, I'm open to have a conversation. You can find my Discord link in the description or pinned comment. Catch me on there and let's talk about it. All right, that's all I have for this one. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all next video.